Hey, this is Amy with Flower Moxie, and I have a special request from Onella to build centerpieces in a Target bowl. So you're going to get two for the price of one. I'm going to do a Target cup and a Target bowl. So it's really nice when you're DIYing. You don't want to probably spend a ton of money on expensive baseware. Like when you're a florist, you get to reuse that stuff. But as a DIYer, you can sell it on Facebook Marketplace, but not so much um, reusing it unless you have friends who want to borrow it. So what I'm doing here is I have this really cute cup I got for a few dollars at Target. It's a really good way of uh, then repurposing your um, baseware. So this is a cup, this is a bowl, all a few dollars. And so for this cup, I'm just making something really light and organic. So I think that's about as much volume as I would need. Let's see where we're at with the leaf. Okay, probably want to add a little bit more and then it's helpful to wrap it with some bind wire because when you're transporting this, even though you can get it all nice at your home or in your studio, this is shallow so it's easy to tip those flowers out. So for that reason, wrapping it um, with a little rubber band, if it's like a, Colored base, and you won't be able to like see the mechanics um, or some bind wire twine is a good way just to ensure that it's not going to get disheveled when you're transporting to your center or to your reception. Where's my bind wire? So this is just simple bind wire. Just going to wrap it around a few times. I love bind wire because I don't need to tie it in a knot. It's just ready to go. I typically take the two ends and twist it. That's how I make sure that it stays secured. Let's cut these guys a little bit shorter. Perfect little centerpiece for bistro tables. Um, yeah, just to like place down long rectangular tables. And let's do something a little bit larger. This is a little knobby white bowl that I got from Target. The dimensions are about five inches, which is what I recommend. So just kind of like a standard compote. I can build it larger than this. So the mechanics that I've used is chicken wire. It's way more eco-friendly than wet floral foam. Obviously you can use foam. Um, I, yeah, I've really gotten uh, used to using chicken wire though. I feel like I get a little bit more movement. Um, it's not so stiff. I'm going to try to remove as much. I'm going to try to go quickly on this tutorial. So when you're doing this, you do want to try to remove um, the leaves that are going to be in the water line just so you won't get it all yucky. You can bring these out if you like the day that you get your flowers. So if you're getting married on a Saturday, you can start greening out Wednesday. And greening out really like sets the foundation. Um, you can add flowers that don't need to open, particularly roses or ranunculus. Those, the second you start crowding those guys, they will cease to open to full capacity. So if you're working with carnations, things like that, you can go ahead and get started on that. You can work as far as much in advance as what you would like. So we're going to time lapse this and I'm going to green this out and then we'll backfill with our flowers. Okay, I do want to say that I'm starting to back pull with my flowers. I will say with chicken wire, it's always a little bit more challenging to get started. 
that was hard for me to get used to when I was so used to working with foam. So foam for beginners is easier just because you stick the stem in and it doesn't go anywhere. Um, with chicken wire, you kind of have to thread in that greenery and it creates like a grid to where it holds everything else in place. So when you start sticking in your greenery and it's flopping out, don't get frustrated. Just keep working your product, add a few anchor pieces and just keep going. Okay, at this point, it's all about working your product. So I have this uh, really fantastic mini carnation. I can take little pieces and I can take it apart and I can fill in gaps. And so a lot of DIY brides get nervous when it comes to recipes and they're like, I don't think I have a stem for every single centerpiece. And when it's a product that has multiple buds on a single stem, we expect for you to cut that apart. And that's kind of a hard thing to get used to when you're a new florist because it feels really wrong to just sit and cut like a perfectly good stem apart. But you want to stretch your product. That's a really important thing um, when you're DIYing, especially when you are being a new florist. And just so you know, I when it comes to DIY recipes, I'm a little, I know that DIY brides are going to be a little bit more heavy-handed. But for all the learning florists that watch my channel, uh, you need to learn to stretch your product because, um, yeah, because it's money. Okay, so it's always nice to have like a lazy Susan. I'm creating this like really organic, kind of more um, architectural shape with this ranunculus just hanging out on its own. It doesn't have to be this shape, this is my preferred shape. So see how this is a lot more like luscious and bigger than that original bowl. And also we noticed the focus isn't on the vessel. So when I was a new florist, I love to tell you all the mistakes that I made. I would try to get like really interesting and bold vases. And then it never like really looked good with the flowers because it's more about the vase and the flowers. That's why, you know, like our simple resin uh, compost that we sell and simple target bowls, um, those are, those make for really great vessels because it's not about um, the container. It's about your art. Okay, I think I'm about there. I think I, I think I'm loving it. Well, I can see in the mirror. That's a little unstable. I'm gonna go ahead, just add a little bit of greenery. I'm not gonna remove the lower leaves this time because I wanna create a little bit of stability in that chicken wire. I probably could have used more of that. It was maybe a little bit too sparse. And shallow bowls are a little bit harder. Like if the bowl was deeper, it would have more um, vessel wall to lean against. All right, I am loving this. I'm gonna balance out a few more things and I'll call it quits. 
And I just kind of like look for holes and opportunities to add little dancers, like I call it. I feel like, yeah, I feel like that guy's a bit much right there because I love what's happening in the front. So I'm gonna stick him, bury him a little bit more in the back. So let's talk about the product that I have in here. I probably have one sixth bunch of uh, seeded eucalyptus. I have like a few sprigs of baby. I have one, two, three, about three or four um, Eskimo roses that I've reflexed. I've cut apart some Lysianthus. So I have one, two, three stems of Lizzie, two stems of Scabiosa, two stems of Ranunculus and probably total about two or three button mums and about two um, mini carnations. So not an expensive arrangement. Um, we do have some like bougier flowers, but if you've noticed, I've elevated those bougier flowers and I've taken my less expensive flowers and my greenery and I've buried it a little bit to create a foundation. It's still pretty and we still want those things, um, but I, I, want my, I want to elevate my showstoppers. So let's see if I can get one more. Let's go for the lighter one. You know me, like I'm just not gonna stop. Sorry, <laughs> just snort. <laughs> that was awkward. Okay. Yeah, I feel like I cut that guy a little bit short. Um, so that this is a good, lear a good learning moment. I kind of wanted this one a little bit elevated, but I cut him too short. So be a little bit conservative because you can always cut more, but you can't add to. And I love Lysianthus anytime I'm going for organic things because these little closed buds, sometimes people will email and complain. They're like, why are they, these closed buds? Are they ever gonna open? No, they're not gonna open unless you reflex them. And just as an example, uh, this guy was a completely closed Lysianthus bud that I reflexed to be open. So um, all these pink ones, they came in, you know, they come in kind of closed, but when you reflex them, it's just another way to work your product and to just get more show out of your flowers. Sorry, I have been doing like vocal fry. <laughs> I think I've been like making fun of the way the Kardashians talked and now, um, now I can't stop. So that's what I get for making sport of somebody else. Okay, adding a few more things because I don't know when to stop. Okay, so then I twist it around with my Lazy Susan. That really helps me see holes and opportunities. Um, you know, I can easily just stick in a nice piece of baby eucalyptus. It doesn't have to be a bud, but this looks very full. And the reason it does is the way I place my product, the way I have space between it, and also, um, that chicken wire really, really helps. So I told you at the beginning, I love chicken wire over foam. Um, and that's because I feel like I get a little bit more space, a little bit more movement and air um, between my greenery and my product, where foam, I feel like I have to go a little bit heavier to really cover that. Um, and it's easy to fix things with chicken wire. So if I feel like I have a hole, I can just kind of come in with my hands and shift things around, zhuzh it a bit, and I feel like I can like work that um, little awkward space out. When it's foam, that like stem is stuck in there, so I don't have that like capability to shift things around like I want it to. But this is a lovely centerpiece in a Target bowl that was probably around $3. So use this for your um, wedding centerpieces. At the end, you can take them home, wash them, and repurpose them for your life with your new um, spouse. So one last thing, if you have registered for really, really nice face wear, really nice, you know, fancy bowls that are expensive, breakage happens. So don't use something that if you break one of them, it's just gonna like ruin your set and break your heart. So yeah. Target Bowls, thank you so much for asking a question, for requesting a video, I love that. So if there's anything that you want me to show you, um, I'm happy to do so. Visit flowermoxie.com to shop your DIY flowers to learn more, and thank you so much.